my how, what was in my mind. I didn't like the way I was thinking about myself. Uh, I found myself to be very critical, uh, very judgmental, uh, living in a kind of uh, an anxious, uh, living in fear, basically living a uh, uh, living in a, uh, uh, a fearful disposition, having a fearful disposition. I, nobody likes to live like that. I, I know you don't. Um, but I thought that, you know, I thought that money, uh, the beauty salon, the beautiful wife, being married, uh, we tried to have children, but unfortunately we didn't. And I thought that would give me a certain feeling of goodness or, 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 or happiness, but it really didn't. Uh, I was born into the Catholic Church, and uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I found that in the Catholic Church, uh, I, I got tired of uh, believing that I was a sinner. But I think the real problem is I didn't know how to really think clearly. And I, I, therefore I had a tremendous inferiority about my ability to, to reason and to think clearly. In, in, the, in the ethics, uh, before you get into the first part, which is God, Spinoza has uh, put together what is called the improvement of our understanding. Now, the improvement of our understanding is exactly what it says. We're trying to, Spinoza was, is, is conveying an idea here. He wrote the improvement of the understanding, and whoever put this book together, the ethics, after Spinoza died, thought, well, this was material should be probably with this ethics. So let's put it in. And because it makes so much sense, because in the improvement of our understanding, Spinoza points out that, that basically uh, we are confused and we need to improve how we think. Uh, and even the first page, if you pick up the first page, Spinoza says, uh, uh, you know, that all the things that he enjoyed about life, um, uh, the, the fame that he was, uh, he was uh, gaining uh, for his philosophy, the, the, uh, uh, it, at that time also he was, uh, his father was a merchant, so he did experience some wealth at some time. Uh, and also, uh, but also the pleasures of sense, uh, uh, whatever it's food or sex or whatever, uh, 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 you know, drugs or whatever it was at that time. I mean, there are pleasures that everybody, you know, uh, uh, wants to experience. But he, Spinoza felt that uh, in his story that he got, grew kind of tired of all that. And he felt that uh, he was a very bright student. Uh, and as a young man, he, uh, he, found, he felt that he was rather restless and he, just, he questioned everything. And uh, actually, he was kicked out of the uh, Jewish community uh, because he began to question the truth of uh, the, uh, the Jewish philosophy, their practices, their traditions. And Spinoza began to, uh, uh, yeah, he studied under other philosophers, especially he was greatly influenced by Descartes. He began, he began to be develop, develop his own philosophy, and he's, uh, and like I'm saying, in the improvement, he began to realize, uh, as he expressed, that he wanted to find out if there was any, anything out there, uh, meaning that if there was something uh, that would give him a, a true, uh, true, true fulfillment, true happiness, and if this thing, uh, and, and he began to think, if, if this thing was infinite and eternal, uh, and I think that he was beginning to uh, realize that, I, I mean, he, he was grew up with the idea that God existed, and, and I think that uh, because of the way he began to see God, uh, people began to, uh, other philosophers or other teachers of philosophy began to uh, say uh, uh, pigeonhole Spinoza in this way. They call him either an atheist or a 
pantheist, pantheist. Uh, uh, but basically Spinoza was beginning to realize that the thing that he was aspiring to was to find out if there was some object that really was able to give him the uh, the truth uh, and help him see clearly what the truth is. And the truth he found was that God existed and was a, it was uh, but was he found that God was not a personal God. Uh, like he did, God did not favor one group over another. Uh, God did not. Uh, you, you'll notice that. <clears throat> Uh, many athletes, you know, pray to God for to win, whatever it's if it's soccer or football or baseball or basketball. Uh, everybody prays to their God, saying, you know, give me uh, give me some uh, uh, advantage here. Uh, the way Spinoza looked at it, God does not look or, or favor any particular people. And God, basically, he's Spinoza, it says that God is infinite. Uh, he has infinite attributes. And the two that we can become aware of, Spinoza writes, is the attribute of thought and the attribute of extension. Now, and, and some of these other, uh, we will get into the nature of God more, uh, uh, more deeply in, a, in another time, but I just want to give you an overview of the direction uh, of where I'm going with this. Likewise, I found that in my religion of being a Catholic did not give me the, the happiness or the fulfillment I wanted. And uh, so when I met my late teacher, Gregory Grover, he talked about Gurdjieff, and Gurdjieff pointed out the idea that man is not a master of himself. Man is uh, is basically asleep. He's asleep to his intuitive intelligence. He doesn't realize he has this intuitive intelligence. And this is why I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, bring up Gurdjieff and Spinoza, because Spinoza, to read Spinoza, you need your intuitive intelligence. You can't read Spinoza just by saying, I want to understand this. There has to be something else, and I think this is why I, I, I begin to understand now, this is why uh, I would say most people do not understand Spinoza because they're, they only see Spinoza uh, and they emphasize the idea of reason. And they debate reason is what Spinoza was all about. I said, no, not at all. If they read the improvement of the understanding, Spinoza talks about the three level of knowledge. Actually, he says four, but eventually he condenses uh, uh, two of them. And the first uh, one, Spinoza talks about hearsay. Hearsay knowledge, basically, is, you know, you're told, you know, it, it, we're all influenced. Uh, I think there was a, there was a saying, and I'm, I'm sure, I, I think I might be, I'm not sure if this is correct, but there's a saying that, you know, a rabbi, a, a rabbi made, a, made a statement saying, if you give me your child uh, from infancy by the age of six years old that child is mine and what does that what does that mean it means that we are influenced by our environment by our parents uh, our sibling siblings the um, our teachers are our, our influence we influence um, very early in life and basically what happens is that we become just like our parents. You know, we say, well, no, we're not going to be like them. But if we're, neither, if we're not like our parents, we're, we're, we want to be the opposite. It's called polarity. We're either like them or the opposite of them. So we're in polarities. Uh, but yet we're, we're, uh, we're not really free. And Spinoza was uh, uh, saying that the first level of knowledge is hearsay. Now, I remember... Uh, when I was uh, in grade school, the teacher told me, well, you being a you know, Mexican, you know, I'm a Mexican-American, my parents were first generation from Mexico, um, and uh, we didn't speak Spanish at home because at that time, this was like 50, 60 years ago, um, 70 years ago, uh, it was looked down upon and it was actually, pun you were punished if you were speaking Spanish in schools. So my mother thought it was a good idea that we really embrace the, the American uh, uh, the, this, the establishment uh, and, and go along with the ideas.